Athletic Complex, and also all of all the, those of us joining at home, joining us at home on the Patriot League Network. We thank you for joining us this evening. I'll just let you know how our program is going to work today. We'll begin with an opening statement from Director of, Director of Athletics Nathan Pine, followed by new head football coach Bob Chesney. Um, after that, we'll open things up for questions from the media. Uh, following the conclusion of the press conference, we'll have time for some brief follow-up questions as well, if, you, if that's need be. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Director of Athletics here at the College of the Holy Cross, Mr. Nathan Pine. Thanks, Charlie. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to begin by uh, welcoming everybody here in attendance at the beautiful Luth Athletic Complex on the Holy Cross campus, and also everyone joining us on the Patriot League Network. Um, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for this exciting occasion. To begin, I'd first like to take a moment to thank Father Burroughs, who's here with us this evening, for his leadership and support throughout this search process. He had a chance to spend some time with Coach Chesney and was duly impressed with his approach to developing young men, as we all were. I'd also like to take an opportunity to thank some of our former players, Craig Saratani, Brian Kelly, Gordy Lockbaum, Dominic Blue, and Gary Aqua for their assistance in the search. It's also important to recognize and thank our student athletes for their input into this process, as well as other key members of the Holy Cross community who took time out of their busy schedules to be part of this important search. We were deliberate in our approach, and we knew we were looking for a special person to lead Holy Cross football into a new era. A person with exceptional leadership qualities, a proven football coach who will instill a winning attitude throughout our program, a person who is committed to building lasting relationships with our players and helping them to become the best versions of themselves in their time with us here at Holy Cross, and a person of outstanding character who will lead with integrity and share our commitment to the mission of Holy Cross. Bob Chesney represents all of those characteristics and many more. He distinguished himself from a very impressive pool of candidates, and I'm confident that he is the right person to lead Holy Cross football back into a position of prominence where we belong. Bob is a winner in every sense of the word. He has been successful at each of his coaching stops throughout his career. He impressed us all with his vision for the program, <laughs> his commitment to developing quality young men who will be prepared to be successful in life when they graduate. One of the traits that I'm most excited about Coach Chesney is the level of energy and passion he has for teaching the game of football and working with young men. As a head coach, Chesney's built playoff level programs at Salve Regina University and most re recently at Assumption College. He's amassed an incredible career record of 67 and 25 and a winning percentage of 728 as a head coach. A two-time Northeast 10 Conference Coach of the Year at Assumption, he inherited a program there that had posted only two winning seasons in the 17 preceding his arrival. He then proceeded to lead the Greyhounds to five straight winning seasons and three consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. And the 2017 football season ended with an NCAA quarterfinals game and a top 10 national ranking. During his eight seasons as head coach, he and his staffs have recruited and developed an impressive 94 all-conference selections and 12 All-Americans. Before I turn this over to Coach for a few remarks, I'd like to take a brief moment to say hello and warm Holy Cross welcome to Andrea Chesney and their two daughters, Lila and Hudson, and also their son, Bo, who are here with us tonight. We're very excited to welcome each of you into the Crusader family as well. Now, without any further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Bob Chesney, head football coach at the College of the Holy Cross. Well, 
welcome and, and obviously thank you all for being here. I, I know there's a million things you could be doing right now, so it speaks volumes of the fact that you're here right now and getting a chance to, to hear about the future of the program. Um, you know, I'd like to thank Nate Pine, obviously, Brendan Sullivan, Rose Shea, and the entire search committee for their, their trust and, and their belief in, in me and, and I think in our family and in what we've done in the past. And um, I've lot, met a, a lot of really great, great people here and the passion for the school and the you know, sense of pride that everybody exudes is something that I'm excited to join along in, you know, in, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, Father Burroughs, I appreciate your time as well. I thought we had an excellent conversation and way well beyond football, but I think that is something that I will stress with our team as well. You know, as if this is just about football, I think we're doing it the wrong way. And, and as we spoke about, the byproduct of, of doing things the right way often ends up doing things the right way on the field as well. So I appreciate your time and, and that. I'd like to thank Assumption College as well. Um, just a, a, a great run at a really, really great place. Uh, from Francesco Cesareo to, to Evan Lipp, Catherine Woodbrooks, Tim Stanton, Nick Smith, and all of the athletic administration really made every single day over there a pleasure to work at. Uh, the, the, the team and the coaches as well, a giant thank you to, to them. Obviously, I am not standing here before you without their belief, their, their buy-in, and, and you know, their ability to take a situation that we had at first inherited and be able to work with us all together to get where we were you know, today and, and to end that season as a top nine team in the country. I think you know, where there hadn't been a lot of success before you know, speaks volumes of their, their ability to sort of morph into everything that we needed them to do. And it wasn't just through one person, but through all of us together. And I think that's something we'll talk about here uh, in, in a minute. Uh, I'd like to thank my family, obviously, for being here, but for all that they do. As you know, a, a coach's family, it's not, not an easy situation, right? There's not a whole lot of it that uh, is, is comfortable at times, not a whole lot of it that they have to be very willing to share, and uh, certainly thank them for that. Um, you know, one of the, the main questions that I, I think people ask or that I've heard and, and had asked today is, why Holy Cross? And to me, you know, as I sit across town and, and watch what this program is and know what this program was, it, it's very exciting for me. I, I've been to a lot of practices here. I've been to a bunch of games here. And I understand that, that the, the staff that was here before, the amount of great people that they recruited, great people that, that are in line or uh, aligned with the mission of the school, it exists here. There's you know, an, an opportunity for us to now take that next step. And in the short period of time that I had to sit here with our team, and in that short period of time that I had to get to know them, I quickly began to realize that they're not that far away. You know, they're really not that far away. And I think a, a small change like this is, is something that I think may be a welcome change in the end, that they're gonna have a chance to understand and, and get a little bit more out of this than what they might have initially anticipated. Uh, the, foundation of, of any great football team is the people. It's the players, it's the coaches, it's the administration, it is the, the maintenance staff, it is everybody, every, the, the faculty, everybody that comes along and, and touches the lives of our players is essential that we all believe in them as, as young men and throughout the community, young men and young women. I think we often get to a point where we feel really strongly about how important we are in our individual roles. And I'm not saying in, in just football, I'm saying in anything that we do. And at a college, it, it, it's very important that I think you understand that it is the, the students that are able to keep this together, right? And the students that enable us to still be able to do our jobs. So they won't be perfect. And I'm, I'm sure that they will have their, their you know, ups and downs. But at the same time, you know, standing by them and believing in them is something that I am certainly here to do. I feel like there is a major need for, for belief in them at this time. And there's a major need for them to get back to enjoying the sport and doing what it is that, that they, they set out to do from the beginning. And I, I, I feel like that's something that we will be able to accomplish in the, in the very near future. Um, you know, when you talk about what's your philosophy and what's your vision, for me personally, something that we, we had discussed a long time ago at a, a previous school was, do we intend to be average? Is that the intention of our team? Do we intend to be good? 
or is it in fact the fact that we intend to be great and then do we eventually surpass the idea of being great and become something a little bit more superior to that? And I think that's something that when I look at the timing of what is going on here at Holy Cross, it's, it's perfectly aligned for that to be the natural progression that we're able to take. We're somewhere at average right now. And I think in a very short period of time, we can get ourselves to good. And I think after that, we can be talking about great. And then I think we could be talking about elite. When I watch from across town, the thing that I look at is I say, I know what the, the mission of the college is. I know that the men and women for others is something that I believe in and something that I don't have to pretend to believe in, something we do on a day-to-day -day basis. That alignment for me personally, which will turn into that alignment for our team, exists. That's 100% factual information. I think the second thing about it for me is when I look at life after football in general. When I think about uh, alums that I know from the Patriot League in general, I think that they're very impressive people that go on and do some very impressive things. But when you take a school like Holy Cross that positions itself at a, at a certain place within that Patriot League, and now the, the, from living in this community, the amount of people that I got to meet in the short period of time that are very proud alums that are going on and, and doing some very, very successful things is what I am most excited to enter into that, into that, that brotherhood with, with all of you. Uh, so when you talk about the life after football, that's always been there, always been there. I think when you look and, and talk about the facilities of the school, we've, we've been in a good spot, but now we've per surpassed good. We've surpassed great, and we've moved to something higher than that, right, into elite status. So the last little piece of that, when we're talking about what would attract you to Holy Cross, it would be that full package, right, that, that we can give somebody everything they expect and then some, as far as life after football is concerned, but at their time here, be good people in the community and, and learn how to give back and learn how to make themselves less important and make those around them a little bit more important, which in the end results in, in great things for everyone involved. But then you add in the facilities and then you add in what we're about to do on the football field and I think this makes it a very, very attractive place for anybody and everybody that might be looking. So you know, for me, the idea of being great, right, to start there, how do I define that? And, and I, I believe that when you talk about it, we look at it as wins and losses, and wins and losses isn't always the best place to start. The day-to-day -day is really the best place to start. So how do we be great tomorrow? And the three things that we found when we were talking about what do you need to do to be great is we said we need to have a, immense amounts of attention to detail. Every little thing needs to matter. Every little thing we do in life needs to matter. It will all add up to something. Right? And, and, and if you can pay attention to detail, I think it's going to put you in a very positive place. The positive attitude is something else that is so necessary for us. And positive attitude is something we're going to live on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm going to challenge our team on on a day-to-day -day basis. But we're not talking about positive attitude for the nice, sunny, great days that might exist out here, but for those tough days. That's why the positive attitude needs to be practiced on those good days, so when the bad day shows up, we still can exercise that idea of a positive attitude. And the final thing is urgency, right? Attention to detail, positive attitude, and urgency. And when you talk about urgency, if anything's worth doing, it's worth doing it at, at, at a, at, with a certain amount of intensity. And that's what I think you'll see on our football field. As far as what type of play you're, you're, you're hoping to see from us, I hope it's exciting. I hope it's something that when you watch it on the field, you look and say, these guys are aggressive offensively, they are aggressive defensively, they take calculated risks, you know, take calculated risks, and they're having a lot of fun doing it, right? To me, that's when you start to see the signs of that successful program. And I think that's something that you'll see in the, in the, very, near, in the very near future. I think in, in my closing remarks here is that any great football program is, is an extension of the college, right? And when, when we talk about being great, right, and we're talking about that being, again, superseding what's on the field, but going back and, and talking about being in the community and all the things we just mentioned, that's what we want to be. So to the students that are out there, I think it's really, really important that you understand these are your friends. These are your teammates. I think we need to do a better job. I think we need to do a better job of, of integrating ourselves into the community, not just with ath athletes, but with everyone else. If we want people at our games, it's important that we get to their games or that we get to their, their play 
or that we get to their symphony or whatever it is that they're doing. It's important that we share in each other's passions and, and in that build a little bit of, of trust between one another. So to the students, I think it's important that they understand that this is their team. Please come out and support it. To the faculty and to the staff, I will make a commitment to make sure that these people, our players, are 110% committed to everything that we're doing in the classroom, in the classroom and in the community. But as you do it as faculty, please think and please, please look at these players and, and be proud of them, right? Be proud of them and understand that this is also your team. Come out and support it. To the alumni, I don't think I have to speak a lot about you coming out and supporting it because I, I know it's there. I've never, never felt a more passionate and, and energized and excited group. And we got to give you something to be excited about. And, and we have to do a better job in that. And I think that we will do that. But this is your team. Please continue to come out and support it. And really to the entire Worcester community, I've lived here now for a little while. I've seen you know, how, how much this town cares. I've seen how much it cares about these young men and women that live in their community, but also what gets done on a football field. There's a, this is a special sport, and I think that this town certainly understands it. We will be involved in your lives. We will be out there through community service. We will be out there doing all those different things that we can do to get to know you. But please, if you see someone walking with a Holy Cross football sweatshirt on, stop, say hi, introduce yourself, get to know them, because this is also your team. Please come out and support it. So for me, th this being here is not you know, so much about a convenience that it's across town, but about the, 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 the sum of all of those things that come, come down to what it means to be a great crusader, what it means to be a crusader when it's said and done. And to me, you know, I cannot be more proud about being here and, and becoming a, a, a piece of this story program and, and this tradition. I don't take it lightly. I understand the pressure. I understand all the things that come along with it. I understand that, that back in my days at Newport, Rhode Island, right, I never was a head coach before. You cannot possibly do it, kid, right? You can't, and we did, right? I think you go over to Assumption and you say, you, you, <laughs> you've never been a Division II coach. You, you've never dealt with scholarships. You cannot possibly do it, kid, and we did, right? I'm not and haven't been a Division I coach. I, I am, can't possibly do it, correct? I think to that, I'll say, we'll just see about that. Okay, I appreciate you being here. I really, really believe strongly in the future on the football field, but in, in, in the people that we're going to bring here. And I feel very strongly that, that in a short period of time, you know, we're going to have something to be extremely, extremely proud about you know, on the football field as well. I thank you for, for your belief in me. I, I know that we'll go through some, some rough spots here as it goes, but I think about transparency and communication is key to me. So if there's something you feel like you need to say, come talk, right? Send an email, stop in, I, whatever. We'll talk about anything, right? If it's a great idea, it's just that. It's a great idea. If it's a bad idea, I might let you know that too. But at the same time, let's make sure that, that you feel like this is your program and these are your players. Show the support to them that they need. And in turn, I think they'll give you something to be proud of. I appreciate your time here. Again, I know that you don't have to be here. And, and I'm just thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone around to you so you can ask your question. Bob, what have your first five days as Holy Cross's head coach been like? Hectic. <laughs> yeah, they've been, they've been hectic in a great way, in, a, in an absolute great way. Uh, on, on Wednesday, we had a conversation. On Thursday, I, I was in here addressing the team, and then it was about, you know, let's get this, let's, let's get it figured out. We have a signing day coming up tomorrow, which is relatively uh, near, as you know, and uh, there's a lot that's got to go into that as far as evaluating our full team, us getting an understanding of what voids we have, us getting an understanding of what way we think we need to go, and then finding the recruits that fit it while trying to keep some of these guys you know, committed, which we feel very strongly about at this time. What, uh, what challenges do you see that are similar from when you got to Salve and when you got to Assumption that, that you face here? Oh man, it's really paralleled. It really, to me, it's, they're both very, very, uh, all three 
are very similar. And and to, in to, in that regard, I mean, it's a team that's so close. Like it's just so close. There's there's this little thing at the end of of some of the games that just doesn't let you get over that that hump, you know. And uh, you've been at, at some of them, but the, the way I think that we practice and the way that, that we are going to compete and the way that we are going to, you know, talk about success and failure and understand that failure is never final, you know, that, that growth mindset uh, and, and give these, these young men a chance to feel what it's like to be successful, but also understand what it's like to fail, but know that that does not have to be, to be final. I think, uh, I think it was Mark Twain that might, might have said something along the lines of the weakest of all weak things is a virtue that has not been tested in fire. And to me, that holds true with football. If you want to know, can your guy get a, you know, can we make an open field tackle on fourth and one, but he's never in that situation with pressure on him. You know, I, I think you'd be really, really hard pressed to answer that with 100 percent, you know, definitiveness. And I think for me, uh, at the previous places that, that I've been, it, it was a, a similar situation. They're close. We need to just test them in a lot of fire before we get on that football field. And then a lot of it will take care of itself. Bob, how much uh, of your staff from Assumption will be making the trip across town with you? Uh, nothing's finalized yet as far as staff is concerned. I think we're, we're leaning in, a, in, in pretty good directions. Just we have not uh, – there's a lot of stuff on the back end, paperwork, and there's a holiday coming up. There's some, some things that are going to slow it down a little bit. But we have a, a, a good idea of what we were leaning. We just are not in a, in a position right now to uh, publicly speak about that. Have you met with the team yet? And, and if so, how'd that go? I did. I did. I met in here. That was on Thursday. I thought it went really well. I, they were, uh, they were, they were, they were, you know, it's hard. It's any, any change is difficult. They were, they were a little bit, a little bit tense, I think at first. And, and we had a, just a, just a, broke it down a little bit so that they could, they could relax. And, um, you know, I think we, we opened up some dialogue, kept a couple guys after to talk about what they want from this experience and what they feel you know, some changes might need to be made. And, and I, I, I stressed it and hope I stressed it up there is it, it can't come from any one person. If I'm the only guy making decisions, I think we're going to be in a lot of trouble. I think we all have to do it in a, a collaborative effort and we got to do what's best for the team, not what's best for each individual. And, and I'm just a firm believer in uh, put your head on your pillow at night. Did you do everything you can do to make your team better, right? And, and not selfishly for any individual or for yourself, but for your team. And if we can all do that, I, I think we'll, we'll be in a good spot. And, I, and it's something I express to them as well. And then being a Pennsylvania kid, I'm sure you're looking forward to playing three teams from your home yeah. state. That must be pretty cool for you. Yeah, well, it, it is pretty cool. I've I, you know, been in New England now since, I guess it was 20, 2010, I think. And a lot of the rosters don't 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 have a lot of Pennsylvania guys on it, and I think well, I did a five year study of of the Ivy League and the Patriot League, and I went back to just try to figure out exactly where the recruiting bases are from, and and where are people having success, and how much do we parallel the Ivies? And there's a lot of Pennsylvania on there, but it's also because there's three teams, you know, no in there. But it was exciting to see that. Bob, as you come in here trying to get this program back on track, is it, is it the same formula that you used at Assumption and Salve Regina, or, the, or are the challenges different at the Division I level? I think, you know, as far as the formula for that, that we've had success with, it wasn't exactly the same from one place to another. I think it all depends upon what that team uh, is up against. You know, what is it that has maybe held them back in the past? What are they going through on a day-to-day -day basis that is preventing them from having, you know, the uh, 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 elite amounts of success? And how do we address those and make it a little bit better? Every place will have its its challenges. You know, I don't think any of the previous place I've been at was the exact same formula. But as far as the competing at practice, as far as the positive attitudes, as far as the excitement, that's non-negotiable. Bob, what has been your main key to success as a head coach? I think listening. You know, I think that sometimes as a head coach, and even as a younger coach, for me, maybe 10 years ago or so, I think uh, you, you didn't want people to know that you might, you possibly could be wrong. You know, you wanted to defend it. Uh, and, and 
you know, that was something for me that I felt like I'm wrong a lot. Right, I think our players are long, wrong a lot. I think a lot of us are are, are wrong in, in our day to day lives. But how can you learn from it, and how can you move on? I think the growth mindset is something for me that's uh, enabled me to have some success, and I think enables you know our players to do the same. That failure is never final, but it's part of the the learning process, and and that to me is, I think, a, a big piece of this. How are you going to feel walking into BC taking them on before some? <laughs> 40,000 screaming meanies. Yeah, I'm, I, I think I'll feel pretty good. <laughs> I, I, I think I'll like it. I think I'll like it. I think um, it's an awesome challenge. It's an awesome challenge. And when I think back to what you know, has been done here a, a time ago, when you're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with, with those guys, you know, that's, that's something that I think our guys will be very excited about, too. Um, I guess, you know, whether there's zero people in the stands or 40,000, I feel for me we have a job to do, and, and that shouldn't be able to affect us much one way or the other. I think that focus and us practicing that way. We, we spend a lot of time with, with loud music at practice and just trying to – loud crowd noise and, and try to make sure that it's something that these guys have dealt with before. It won't be exactly the same, but it's something that we, gotta make, we have to make sure we can communicate and we can do all the things that, that we need to do. But I think it'll be, I think it'll be a lot of fun. You talked about this being like a team effort, you know, in terms of with the administration staff and everyone. It can't be just one person or one department. Did you guys talk about that during – maybe, Nate, you can even answer it. Did you guys talk about it first and then, uh, Bob, the – you know, the whole in, – in any successful program, whether it's football, basketball, mm -hmm. hockey, what I've seen, you need that whole institutional support. It can't just be one department or one guy. Did you guys talk about that? And, and how much of, of that dialogue went on during this process? Yeah, I think that's a big piece of it. Part, part of our conversation circled around a, a partnership. We have to have a similar vision and, and shared goals in what we're trying to do here. And then we've got to recruit a lot of people around this campus to be part of that. So we've been working hard over the last four years to, to gain some momentum in that direction. I think Coach Chesney's a, a big piece of carrying that forward in the sport of football. But absolutely, I mean, we've under Father Burroughs' leadership, we, we've been able to make a lot of progress there. But we're going to continue to work at that every day because that's what we need to have happen to have success across the board in our programs. And then uh, for one more for you, uh, Nate, too. Just, you know, hiring a Division II guy. I know that you had alums out there and you had, you know, what was it that, that drew you to Coach Chesney and, and what was some of the characteristics? I mean, you touched on him a little bit, but that, that put him over the top for you. Sure. For me, it was about hiring the best football coach. And whether that person came from Assumption College right down the road or came from uh, the state of Washington, it really didn't matter to me. We had a national search to make sure that we were beating the bushes and, and made sure that we had the right folks in the pool to talk with. Um, but at the end of the day, we want this program to be successful and we need the right person to step into Holy Cross where we're headed and what we have to offer um, and see that as a great opportunity. And that was very quick and, and very easy in our conversation. So we, we got to that very quickly. That's right. Yeah. Uh, recruiting has gotten to the point where we like to get commitments in the junior year or certainly mm. before football begins mm. in the fall. Mm. And I think uh, our staff had done a pretty good job of getting verbal commitments from a number of people, maybe 10 or so. Mm. What are your plans in terms of getting out and talking to these people? Meeting their families, and uh, so that to me is a very crucial point. Are you are you speaking of the the ten or so that we have committed at this moment? Yes. Yes. So NCAA, you're not technically allowed. This is a dead period right now that you can't go and speak to them face to face right now. So uh, I spent a lot of time on the phone over the weekend speaking to every single one one of them, and uh, some parents of, uh, included. And I feel that. Of the 10, you know, there's 10 that are very solidly committed at this time. You know, we'll find out if the papers come through the fax machine tomorrow. But at the same time, you know, I feel like what, what, where our previous staff has done, we've been able, they've done a great job, an unbelievable job of maintaining that relationship in the time throughout where, where there wasn't a head coach. And I feel like 
you know, when we named a head coach and my ability to communicate with them, I feel strongly that, you know, that they will do that. Uh, but you're right in what you're saying. And I think the looking back at the calendar for, you know, this, the speed that the December 20th deadline brings you, that, that means, you know, if you're still playing, you make it a round or two deep in the playoffs, you may only have one chance to get, get to get these guys on campus. So, it's important that we do dil in our due diligence over the summer and in the spring. I think having a day where, where junior, you know, juniors can come to campus and check out a basketball game or come to our spring game or do those types of things where they can begin to learn a little bit more, begin to see a little bit more about you know, what Holy Cross has to offer, I think that will help us speed up that process by the time we get to that December, December visit date. I got other questions from the media now, and others who want to talk to Coach can do so after the press conference. Nate, how large was the initial pool of candidates? I remember you had mentioned right off the bat you had interest from we did. a lot of people. We had, we had a great number, as with any opening that we have at Holy Cross. There is uh, a lot of interest in, in where this is headed. So we, we had a number of applicants. We, we narrowed that down to a smaller pool that we really started digging in deeper on, and then we, uh, we had four finalists. Mm -hmm. And when did Bob really emerge as, as your man? Well, we wanted to make sure that we brought our finalists to campus in, in quick succession so we could evaluate them against each other. And so the, both of those visits happened, and uh, Bob was the last candidate on campus, and, and he made a, uh, a very good impression. Uh, we made one offer, and that was accepted, and we've got our new football coach, so mm -hmm. we're very excited about that. When you set out, um, did you have a timetable in mind? Was it December 15th? Was it earlier than that? Um, you know, did you have a date in mind when the search process began? I think going through this experience at a number of schools, you always have to be flexible. Um, you want to move deliberately through the process. We did have an extra uh, challenge this year with the new signing period on December 20th. So I thought it was important if we could to make sure that we had our coach in place and there was a little bit of run-up, an opportunity to recruit this class, understanding who the new coach and that maybe some of that staff was going to be. But you need to remain flexible. So at the end of the day, we needed to make sure we had a great football coach to lead this organization. Nate, can you get into the terms of the contract with a, you know, the length of it? Uh, we don't discuss the... Uh, personnel deals at, at Holy Cross. What I will say is uh, Coach Chesney's signed a five-year contract. So we plan to have him at Holy Cross for a long time. And Bob, when you got back from Pennsylvania after the quarterfinals, mm -hmm. did you envision that being the end of the road, whether it be, you know, you knew the, the job was going to be open here, but whether it was going to be somewhere else at the 1AA level or... Yeah, I don't. I don't know that you think on those terms because it's not anything you could necessarily control. You know, I, I'm very proud of what we were able to do uh, across town, and you know, being with those guys, you know, is, is something that uh, I hope we could develop that type of relationship here. You know, to to how how close knit of a group we really and 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 truly were up there. It was something you know very very special. So it wasn't anything that you know I was you know, throwing a million resumes all over the place and excited and trying to get out of there. That was the, the, the last of it. But it, it was going to take a special situation, you know, at a special place that I felt like, you know, I can make an impact at, you know, and, 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 and help them further their, their, you know, their program as well. So it, it would have had to strike a lot of different things, and, and, and it certainly did here at Holy Cross. Bob, have you ever met Brian Kelly personally? Yes. Oop. Our Brian Kelly here or the Notre Dame Brian the Kelly? The Notre Dame Brian Kelly. Because huh? I haven't met the, our Brian Kelly, who's supposed to be there. But I, I have met Brian Kelly on, on numerous occasions. He's been very, he, uh, he's been very, very um, welcoming to us uh, at Assumption, and we've gone out there. I've gone out there, I think, three times now and spent three or four days, and, and yes, I have. So you know the great one. Yeah, I do. Any other questions from the media? Just with the signing period they were talking about, but you had the same thing your first year at Assumption. Just <laughs> how much does that experience help? Because I remember, you know, you got hired, and I think it was the same thing. A couple of days later, you guys were looking at the fax machine and seeing, mm -hmm. you know, oh, he, he yeah. went somewhere else. Oh, he went yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. So just talk about having that experience of being hired, you know, late in the recruiting process, how much that kind of helps you or even kind of gives you a confidence yeah. like, 
All right, I've been here before. That's a good point. I, I don't think I ever would have associated that experience to something that became positive later because that was a difficult that was difficult we were hired on on signing day I think was was the exact day it was it was a it was it was difficult but you're right I think it so so what did we learn from it we learned that building relationships quickly and and there's a trust factor that goes into that as well they don't really know you so why would they trust you but this is the first chance you have to do right by these families and to hold up your end of of the bargain there was offers made to to those players just like there were here and it's I don't don't believe our place to come in there and say sorry we you know we're we're moving off of you and something different you know that I think through you know Nate's leadership in in that in that um, department that was something we were going to stand by and stand behind our word and we expect them to do the same and they are at, at this point in time so you know I, I I think it did help a little bit but I think you know we're at assumption you know, there was great leadership there through Nick Smith at that time and, and now here through Nate to work through both of those things. You know, we certainly end up in that situation where I think it was a very big positive for everyone and started to build the foundations of trust, you know, for the, the, that program moving forward. I think one of the key things we have here is we've got a new early signing period that the NCAA has, has done in Division One, So it's a two-day period before the holiday, but we'll have the traditional recruiting period in January up to the first Wednesday in February. So this will be new for everybody this year. I think it's uh, an important thing to see how that shakes out in Division One recruiting because it, uh, it'll be a challenge. Any other questions? All right. Well, thanks to everybody for joining us today. And thanks for those watching on the Patriot League Network. Go Crusaders.